Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. You know what? Listen, this year I'm going to put a new twist on an old tradition on this Father's Day. So many times, you know, uh, and we talk about dads and we should not taking anything away from them. But this year, I want to talk about, I want you to consider your heavenly father. And you know what? All that he has done for you, everything that he has done for you, our father God. That's what we're going to talk about today. And you know what else? We're going to be sharing it from taking the word father and just breaking it down, each letter of it. And let's just talk about him from that perspective here on this Father's Day. You know, there was a lady who was sitting in church on Mother's Day. This is how it all started. And she was sitting there hearing mothers being honored and recognized as they should be. And she thought about the fact that there was not a Father's Day for her father. And she wanted her father to be recognized. She did not want him to go unrecognized. Okay. By sitting there and listening to that about her mother, she felt as though nothing's happening for my dad. I don't want him to be taken for granted. And many times we, as children of the Most High God, you know, many times you take God for granted. He's just such a great God and he does so much. So I just want us to be brought to a place of remembrance on today. I want us to begin to recognize just, you know, just how great our Heavenly Father is and what he has done for you. Let's talk about it today and honoring them. See, and you know, the Bible the Bible commands us to honor our fathers. Amen. And we want to do that. So in so doing, I want us also to consider our heavenly father. And let's do it through the name father. And let's not take him for granted. Let's start with L. You see, because God is our model father. Oh, yes. And I hope that you can take men of uh, fathers that are out there. And, you know, there are a lot of us that may not have uh, children, but we're uncles and and, and and we have the care of those and taking care of those. It happens with men too. Yes, just like with the women. And I don't want to take it for granted. I see you. I honor you. And I thank God for you. So I want us to look at this today. And as we look at it through Father and breaking it down, I want to, to hopefully that you'll see a model that will definitely um, encourage a lot of human dads that are there on today. Let's start with F. F is for forgiveness. Mm. Oh, that's a huge part of your relationship with God, with your father, God. Huge part of it. Because, you know, let me tell you something. He's willing and he's able to forgive any and all. All we have to do is give it to him. Ask for forgiveness. Give it unto him. Oh, my God. That's a huge part of your relationship with your father. And I tell you, when you begin to take on this characteristic, Oh, let me tell you, we are human. We'll make mistakes. Haven't done it, right? God, he's just so comforting. He knows just how to just make everything that you have done that wasn't what it should have been. He knows how to take all of that and God will forgive you. There's nothing that God won't forgive you of. You know, the Bible says, uh, let's look at some scriptures. You know, I'm going there. Romans 8 verses 38 and 39, it says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, you know, this is Paul writing, yes, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know what? God is such a forgiving God. It does not matter what you've allowed to get between you and your relationship with God. Give it to him right now. He's a forgiving God. Oh, don't let anything separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Put him first. And oh, I tell you, he'll make you first. Oh, he will grant it unto you and you will be recognized. It'll happen every time. Oh, yes. Now, that's unconditional acceptance, isn't it? <laughs> unconditional. And that's what you'll have too as you begin to take on the characteristic of forgiveness. Let's go to the next one. Eight. Mm -hmm. God is active 
in your life all the time. He's active. He's active. He's right there all the time. Oh, I just love it. Let me tell you, God is always at work around you. He's busy. He's always fixing things. You see, if you ask God to show you what he's doing, ask him, ask him, Lord, show me what you're doing. You'll be amazed at what is going on. You'll be amazed at how God is moving on your behalf. Oh, glory to God. And then more important, you will open up an opportunity for you to get involved with what God is doing. Uh, for you to become a part of it. Mm -hmm. You don't ever have to wait your turn to be active with God. John 5 and 17. You know what it says? It says, that Jesus replied, my father is always working and so am I. This is where, let me tell you, if you read the whole context of that, it was showing how they were persecuting Jesus for healing a man on the Sabbath day, okay? Because of his choice, okay, that was ignoring their rules and their regulations that they had set up, okay? And this is what happened many times in your life. When you choose, when you make a conscious choice that you're not going to allow anything to separate you from the love of God, when you make a conscious choice that you're going to walk in forgiveness, when you make a conscious choice that you're going to start doing it the way God says do it in your life, uh, you're gonna, they're going to be those around you. I call them they sayers and we sayers. They're going to be those around you. They, those that you haven't been around, but that you, you know, would consider as being those that have something to say that you should think about. And then the we, those that you hang around, that be with, we, we together, we can. But let me tell you, it comes a time you can't let nothing separate you. And you're going to have to go on and do what, what Jesus says do. Why? Because Jesus replied to them. His reply to them and them being upset. Mm -hmm. The religious rulers being upset with what he was doing. He said, hey, you're talking about today. We always at work. My father's always at work and I am too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So A is for active. He is always active in your life. Ask him to show you. Then ask him, uh-huh, how can I get involved in this? How, what can I do? <laughs> God is good. Okay, let's go to T. You ready? He always has time for you. God always. Our Father God is awesome. Always has time for you. Oh, you know, humans can get too busy, too busy to do this and too busy to do that. But God is, he's never too busy. He always has time for you. He's always right there. Whenever you feel lonely, whenever you feel in a struggle, whenever you feel a problem, let me tell you, he's right there and he wants to share a thought. He wants to be right there with you. He wants to get in on your need. He wants to, to, to deal in your situation. Oh, yes. And he wants to do it with concern. Oh, I love that about him. Mm, he is there for you. Huh? Time. He's got it. Mm, if you can't find time in your day and you are too busy, Come on now. You're too busy and you're too busy to talk. You're too busy to listen. Let me tell you, stop. Take on this characteristic. Just like God, take time. He always has time. Always have time. Mm, God is so good. Well, what am I going for that? Jeremiah 33 and 3. This is my church mother's favorite scripture. But let me tell you about this scripture. Oh, this scripture is talking about the promise of restoration. God will begin to restore when you start taking time. Oh, yes, for those priorities that God has set up for you to have in your life. Because God does this. Oh, yes, he takes time and restore. He's never too busy. Jeremiah 33 and 3. You know, let me tell you about the beginning of that. I love that verses 1, 2, and 3. You see, it says, while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard. See, while he was still bound, he was in prison. The word of the Lord came unto him. You can be very busy. There can be things taking up your time. But God still wants to get involved. He's still concerned about you. Mm, the word of the Lord came to him the second time. Oh, I'm telling you, if you missed it the first time, God will come around again the second time. And this is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. 
This is what he said, Jeremiah 33 and 3. Take the time. Mm, God always has time for you. Call upon me. I will answer, and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. Oh, unsearchable things, it says. You do not know. Another translation of that. Let me tell you. T, he always has time. You take the time. Take the time for your family. Take the time for the important things that God has placed in your life. Take the time to listen. Uh-huh. When those are people are talking to you, take the time that God has placed you in their path. Take the time. Mm-hmm. And be concerned. Let's move on. H. Oh, I like this. Oh, glory to God. The heart of the matter is that God knows your heart. And he loves you anyway. Isn't that good? <laughs> The heart of the matter is that God knows your heart and he loves you anyway. I love that. You know, the the book of Proverbs says that the heart is a deceitful thing. That's what it says. Mm. It says most de deceitful above all things. Oh, my God. What does that mean? That means that you're human and you make mistakes. Oh, mm. But God is letting us know right there. God wants to be with you. He wants to be right there. Anytime. Anytime. Because uh, he knows your heart. He's with, he's with you in the mistakes. He's with you in the lows. Uh-huh. The low, the valleys. He's right there with you anytime. I want you to know that, that you're not alone. And he is able. He's able to change situations. Why? Because he's on your side. 1 John 4, verses 9 and 10. Oh, yes. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son uh, into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Oh, glory. And sent his son as an atoning sacrifice. For our sins. Ooh. Then look, look at verse 19. Same chapter, 1 John 4. We love because he first loved us. Mm. You know what? That's letting us know. We don't even know how to love until we begin to walk in God's agape love, that unconditional love. Mm. That's where God wants us to be. Not because this is your friend, not because they're part of your family, not because it's somebody that you know. No, unconditional. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to listen to you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to be concerned about what you have to say. Oh, because you're important to me. I may have just met you, but God sent you across my path. It touched my heart. God knows the heart. He knows what's going on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm going to stop and I'm going to take the time. He knows it. And he knows the hearts of those that have made mistakes. He knows it. He's right there. Anytime he's for us. God is so good. Oh, he's a great God. Oh, hallelujah. Awesome God. E. Everywhere. Sums up God's place in your life. <laughs> he wants to be in everything and he is there. God is just everywhere. Oh, my God, I'm not present. He's everywhere in your life. <laughs> if you're a believer, there's nowhere you can be, no place you can go that God isn't with you. He is right there with you. Oh, my God, what a comfort. And you know what? When you begin to realize this, it encourages you. When you begin to realize this, it builds you up and gives you confidence. Oh, yes. When you go through those tough places in your life, to know that God is right there with you because he's everywhere. Oh, he's right there. And, and it lets us know through his word in Romans 8, verses 35 through 39. He lets us know right there. I, I, I'm i telling you right. I'm your father. I'm concerned. Oh, yes, I care about you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I'm active in your life. I take the time to listen to you. I know your heart. I'm everywhere. I don't care where you go, what mistake you made, where you may find yourself. Oh, we all been there. We've been there to say, I never would have thought this would have happened to me at this time. Oh, but he's right there. He's still with you. Woo, glory. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. I want to encourage you today. God is by your side. Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep before the slaughter. Mm, mm, mm. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Oh, hallelujah. More than conqueror. Whatever tough spot you're going through now, you're more than a conqueror because of your father, God. Mm, but I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Woo! That's good read right there. <laughs> Aura. I'm just going to go on to Aura. Aura, rest, and read. You see, these are two areas where everybody, you, me, can use a little work. Rest and read. Rest is important because uh, it's easy. It's easy, so easy to become so busy that you don't rest as you should. You see, you don't take the time to rest and read. You don't take the time to be with the Lord. We be with him through his word. We be with him through the quiet times that he began. You know, he doesn't always, he, he not, he's not going to rush in upon you. He's going to come at a time that you're, you know, availing yourself to him. He wants you to set aside daily time to rest in him. He wants you to set aside daily time to read his word. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, because the Bible is his letter. It's his love letter to us. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's the best way to get your to get to know the, the Father is that you spend daily time in rest and reading with him. That's the best way. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to find out about him through his word. Mm -hmm. You get to know him. Yes, you will. In his word. Oh, glory to God. And as you begin to rest in him, you're just waiting on it. Oh, you become patient in God. Oh, God is so good. You know, the Bible tells us in John 14, 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Well, when you read his word, then you get to know what his word says, what his commands are. Mm -hmm. It says the one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to them. Let me tell you, as you begin to get into God's word, it takes you into revelation. You begin to see what you haven't seen before. You begin to hear what you have not heard before. You begin, I mean, let me tell you, your heart, let me tell you, God has so much unsearchable things for you that your heart hasn't even begun to tap into what God has for you. But it opens you up. It gives you the capacity. It stretches you to receive and to walk in those things as you begin, I'm telling you, to rest and read. Rest and read. All right. Then Psalms 46 and 10 says, he says, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Ah, oh, that's good. Rest and read. Let me tell you now, if you just begin to walk, let me tell you, this, this model of our Father God, let me tell you, dads, huh, you begin to walk. And that forgiveness and just receiving and just forgive. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, you begin to see what God is doing. You'll see that he's active and at work in your family, on your job, in your finances, in your life. Oh, yes. And ask him, let me get involved with what you are doing. And in so doing, you'll find that God begins to take time. Oh, yes, because he's got the time. You begin to see what he's doing. Then you, you begin to say, oh. He has time for me. Yes, he does. He's just been right there waiting for you to get engaged with it. Oh, and he'll take the time. He's so concerned and he'll listen to you. 
Oh, yes, he will. Oh, he's a great God. He's an awesome God. And God knows your heart. He knows that many times, you know, we make mistakes and that's not what was intended. But God knows your heart. And he knows your heart when you just foolish and mistake was on your part. But he's such a forgiving God. He's such a God that takes time in our lives. And he knows, oh, he's actively involved and knows our heart. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and let me tell you, he's just he's just right there. He is just everywhere. He's everywhere. He's just right there. He's just involved in everything that you're doing. He's a part of. He's just right there. When you're down, when you're depressed, when you're lonely, he's right there. Oh, when you're happy, when you're giddy, he's right there. He's an on-time God. And then you rest and you read. You take that time to, to just rest and get into his word. And he'll begin to show you. You'll begin to see what you haven't seen. You will begin. He'll show himself to you. What a great God he is. How awesome he is. How powerful he is. How mighty he is. Begin to do that. And you'll see that you'll make Father's Day a special day. And those of you that's listening, make Father's Day a special day for your dad. You know what you can do? Write a letter. Make a phone call. Give him a call. And just say, thanks. Yeah. You know what you can do? Try to get into his world for a change and spend time doing something with your dad that he enjoys. Mm -hmm. Number three, have a conversation that doesn't have anything to do with something you need. <laughs> Number four, focus on all the positive things that he has been in your life. All right. Realize that God has placed him there. You know, so focus on those things, all the positive things that he's been in your life so far. All right. And when you do that, you'll, you'll realize that God has placed this person in your life for a reason. And his name is Dad. So be thankful. <laughs> well, that's a new twist on Father's Day. And it was just for you to not take God for granted because it's so much that our Heavenly Father has done for us. And when we embrace that, it enables us to be thankful for that special dad, that person that God has placed in your life. Well, come on, give God some glory. Give him some praise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Putting a twist on an old tradition. God is so good. God is so good. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. I thank God for you being there. It is offering time at Kano's. This is good ground. So you know what? Plant your seed. Plant your seed. Release your seed. Amen. Your tithe, your offering, your special significant seed. However, the Lord is leading you to plant on today. Mm, you plant. I'm telling you, when you put your seed in the ground, there's a covenant between the soil and your seed. It must produce. It must bring forth. I just believe that and not to the point of knowing, but also to the point of seeing it happen in my life. I know that I know. I've gone past the point of knowing. I'm in the reality stage and I'm just saying, ha, you can forget it. I know that I know that I know. It becomes the flesh in my life. God is so good. He has no respect of person. He'll do the same thing for you. Yes, he will. The seed and the soul. They got a covenant. Must produce. In the name of the Lord. God bless you and I love you.